This is an island in which for centuries, all traces of African cultural traditions were repressed. The people of St. Lucia are predominantly Catholic. Several times in the 17th and 18th centuries, this was a French colony. But the Calais cult never completely disappeared. Today it exists as a relic of the old world few St. Lucians really understand. The church, on the other hand, has found a new relevance here, as local traditions have been incorporated into many of its practices. Saint Dimas at Rousseau, like the great mural behind the altar, is a modern amalgam of different influences. The service is partly in English, partly in French. Today's preacher, Father Anthony, is based in Castries, though he comes from the neighboring island, Dominica. My friends, good morning, the people who are coming here. I'm going to go to the church of the church. Before I'm going to go, I'm going to see the other people who are coming here. Although the official language is English, he preaches in Patois, the French Creole, as it is the only language which many of these country people are rarely at home. We have to face the fact that when we talk in culture, we better admit that there's always a measure of manipulation. Uh, the British came and they brought their national anthem, which is sung in all the schools, God Save the Queen. They brought the, the Anglican religion, the hymns and so on, which were absorbed by the school children. Um, and the Roman Catholics brought theirs. This religion is laid down, call it Christianity. That's one influence. Um, then you have movements like black power, which bring shifts in emphasis and which bring a certain consciousness. Uh, they have their dirty sides. People perhaps go off the beam and exaggerate and you get something looking like race hatred in, in this talk of black culture a reaction to what went on before. You really have quite a hodgepodge in these parts, and you find yourself now something at the crossroads where with independence, there is a deliberate effort to encourage people to stick to what has been theirs or to appreciate what has been good in what they had before from African stock and not to just throw it overboard and become second-rate Europeans. Few young people take part in the Kelly dancing, but they do watch the older folk enjoying themselves. The Kelly can be traced back to the Shango cult of spirit worship in West Africa. As this ancient tradition is reinterpreted here, many country people are in two minds. There's a fascination in preserving their old customs, but it's mixed up with a desire to develop and leave such things behind. You will not find a majority of your people in Castries, your capital, particularly interested in what goes on at Piai, where you have witnessed a particular kind of African dance and so on. This would not be something that they're seeing every day. You will find it more in the country parts. That's the African aspect of things. In Castries, you will hear a lot of, and on the radio, you will hear a lot of music which is not uh, what emanates from our mixture. Reggae, for instance, is not something St. Lucian. So to assess St. Lucia, you really have to sift a lot and uh, not just assume, well, what goes for Jamaica goes for St. Lucia.
For well, most of our people, particularly in the islands of St. Lucia and Dominica, they speak the, the, uh, the French patois, the Creole. And uh, as ministers of the gospel, for several years, we were not allowed to communicate through this medium. And so the people have been losing quite a bit. Now, since the Vatican II, things have changed, and the church is allowed to use the vernacular, and even forms of, of, uh, of culture which hitherto had not been allowed, such as dancing, drumming, and, and folk songs, etc. So in this respect, I'm happy because the people are able to express their innate feeling of religion in a way which makes them feel at home in church. As members of the Roseau Valley congregation offer their bidding prayers, you get some idea of the diversity of the island's people and the strength of their faith. Pleasant pain, Lord, I will be done. I take this for my sins. I offer up to thee my suffering together with all that my Savior had suffered for me. And I beg of thee through his suffering to have mercy on me. Free me from the sinless and pain if thou wilt, and if it be for my good. Thou lovest me too much, let me suffer unless it be for my good. Therefore, O oh Lord, I trust myself to thee. Do with me as thou pleasest. In sickness and in health, I wish to love thee always. Oh, While churches in England may have lost their congregations, St. Lucia's churches have always been full of enthusiastic worshippers. One active member of the church at Babineau is Mr. Noah Delay. Though he's nearly 80, he's still a successful farmer. He's also an ardent devotee of the Kelly cult, of which he's the only living high priest. The Kelly ceremony centers on the box of so-called thunderstones, which are in fact hand axes dating from the Amerindians. In the Kelly, the spirits are propitiated with the blood of a sheep, a notion of sacrifice that some of the cultists refer back to the Old Testament. Only one God I know. All these things doing is only one God. You, uh, Joseph, help me. I'm a local fan. When, when you give in a kele, you address yourself to God. And whatever you ask, you get it. Now, I saw you at the Catholic Church two weeks ago. I went with you. Is it the same God there as you were worshipping yesterday? Yes, sir. It's only one God. Only one God? Only one God. But what do you call him in the Keller ceremony? Um, uh, how you call the God? Yes, yes. A.K. Mio. A.K. Mama Kelele. My grandmother born um, in, in Africa, my grandfather born in Africa, they bring it here in slave. And uh, my father born here. And I didn't know my grandfather, but my, my, my father, I know he and me. Now, you know what part of Africa your grandfather came from? Uh, I believe it's uh, a kitty. A kitty? A kitty. The church does not label automatically a particular dance or forms of culture as pagan if 
it is related to the Supreme Lord and Master. For instance, when Christianity first started, most of the forms of ceremonies were pagan, but they were Christianized because they were used for the worship of the one true and only God. And therefore the same thing pertains even today. Even though forms of dances have been used by non-Christians, and they are now used in Christian worship with certain modifications, then the church, although she uses those, but she does so very cautiously in order not to offend people's feelings or certain norms and in the, in the, of the society or patterns of behavior. Another cultural tradition, strongly discouraged by the church until recently, was the local style of folk dancing at P.I. on the remote south coast of the island. It's led by the master drummer, Mr. Leonard John. That's an African dance I'm drumming. Whenever we have dances, that's the kind of music we play. We don't play any other music here except African music. The Africans came from the land of my mother's grandmother, or my mother's great-grandfather. So these people came to live here, and they had children here, and kept the same kind of dance that my ancestors had brought over. When I was born, I kept on with the same African dance. Well, right now in P.I., I'm a fisherman. It is only when I get a chance that, that I drum for people. They pay me a little something. I also grow a little garden, and that's the kind of thing I do. I think you can imagine what it was that the church didn't like. Respectable society didn't like it much either. Mr. Lennon, what is your religion? And you don't have any African religion here? No. Not at all? Not at all. But the church has always included some individuals who have promoted local culture. It was a French priest who commissioned the mural from the local artist, Dunstan Santomer. The effect combines the unmistakable flavor of Italy with an experience of St. Lucia. This setting of Lord Have Mercy was composed by Charles Cadet, who is a St. Lucian civil servant and diplomat. chapel, as pivot of this valley, round which whatever is rooted loosely turns, men, women, ditches, the revolving fields of bananas, the secondary roads, draws all to it, to the altar, 
and the massive altarpiece. Like a dull mirror, life repeated there, the common life outside and the other life it holds, a good man made it. When Dunstan first completed that mural, I think it took a great deal of St. Lucia by storm. Uh, not that there was an overwhelming rush down to see it, but as the word got around and people did go to see it, and I think within the community itself, it uh, sparked off quite a lot of, of comment and uh, of, of interest and to a certain extent concern. Because for the very first time you were seeing the actual people who live in an area portrayed inside of a church, which has always been a very protected, sacred sort of uh, receptacle and uh, to have the actual faces of the people surrounding was quite something. To me, you know, the most important um, religious painters are Italian. You know, for instance, the, fir the first Italian great painter, of course, that influenced me naturally is um, uh, Michelangelo. My statement, as you can see in the Rosa Church, is that Christianity is a universal religion and anyone can become a Christian and therefore if I am a St. Lucian Christian, therefore um, I can't be an Italian Christian. So if I were to express Christianity, it has to be expressed, you know, in my St. Lucian terms. <laughs> replicated that elsewhere now. One of my favorites is the Manchi Church, St. Rose of Lima, where he, he celebrates the Feast of La Rose, which is very, very St. Lucian, and has in there, as usual, himself. He is always there. This time he's the King of La Rose. St. Rose of Lima was the first saint canonized in the New World. Born of a Puerto Rican father, her concern for the poor inspired an enormous following in the Americas. In St. Lucia, the tradition of masquerade is promoted by the La Rose Society. In historical times, everyone in St. Lucia was a rose or a marguerite. The Rose is almost a way of life with its costumes and songs, dances and ceremonies. The original inspiration was religious, but its present day appeal, like that of Carnival, is universal. In the beginning, how could the people love themselves and know themselves and respect themselves if they're worshipping a white god and the people are black? You know what I mean? I mean it's, it's just incongruous. It just, it just can't happen. God is their father, you know, and God is white and they are black. There's a little infidelity somewhere, you know what I mean? I think most of us regard the rural areas as being the bastion of what we traditionally call St. Lucian. And there is a, a very real fear that the young people may not be learning or making it a point to learn the traditions. Uh, in very recent weeks, I've been reassured that the young people are very much concerned and are retaining the traditions. And there are more and more youth groups and this sort of thing growing up in the countryside and making it a point to get the oldsters in to teach them the music and play the violin while they learn the dances and this sort of thing. So that I, you know, I'm not as fearful as I was a few years ago about us losing some of the heritage. The 
Babano String Band, average age 65, play mostly on homemade instruments as they have done for more than half a century. The dancers are a little older and include a debonair Mr. Noah Delay and partner. The gavotte, polka, quadrille, waltz, these people have decorated the dancers of Europe with their own traditions of dignity and style. It's something St. Lucian that goes very deep despite the self-conscious amusement of the young onlookers. The most important thing to me about the human being is his spirit. And in the West Indies, we have a little problem. And that problem is, you know, our slave inheritance. And many of us do not realize how much we are still enslaved. We have got, um, you know, we have got independence, political independence and all that sort of thing. But we are not sure that we have um, uh, intellectual independence. So I thought, in a country like St. Lucia, that is dominated by the spirit in the, in the case, uh, um, meaning that you know, it's such a religious country. Now, through religion, I can make a powerful statement by showing the people, by freeing the people. And the best method of freeing the people is by making them love themselves and respect themselves and know who they are. Several different artists have succeeded in drawing on the whole St. Lucian experience. The jazz musician, Luther Francois, celebrates by fusing a modern idiom with an old folk tradition. After so many bottles of white rum in a pile, after the flight of so many little fishes from the brush that is the finger of St. Francis, after 5,000 novenas and the idea of the Virgin coming and going like a little lamp, after all that, your faith like a canoe at evening coming in, so that from time to time, on Sundays, between adorations, one might see, if one were there and not there, looking in at the windows, the real faces of angels. <laughs> 